She is something else. Judge Judy, all rise. She's been an iconic part of television history for quarter of a century now. She is back with a brand new show. It's called Judy Justice. I sat down with Judge Judy in her home for an up close and personal look at how she's taking on this new role with some old tricks. Judge Judy, thank you so much for inviting me to your home. I'm glad you came. It's beautiful. Uh, you just never stop. I'm so happy to see you sitting down for five seconds. If you, you know, the only way the Grim Reaper is going to get you is if he can find you. So <laughs> you just have to keep bobbing and weaving I, I, and doing what you like to do. And you do love what you do. And you've come up now with another show. Judge Judy, like, what do you do? Do you never, like, when you go to sleep, does your mind turn off, or is it constantly going on what's next? I, Rosanna, I believe in staying in your lane. I know what I know how to do. I also know what I don't know how to do. I, I can't invent something that would put me on a ballet stage, <laughs> even when I was 30 or 20. I know I have a certain skill set, so when I imagine what could be another act, it stays within my lane, but puts some flesh on the bones that maybe is a little bit different. Uh, this new show is really terrific, Judy Justice. It allows me actually to go back to my roots in the family court because in the family court, I always had a law clerk and always had a stenographer, which I always used both as readbacks and if sometimes if I wanted to say something, I probably shouldn't say this, I'm gonna say it anyway, that was off color or- Not politically correct. Not politically correct, yes. maybe a little snarky, I would go like this to the stenographer, <laughs> which means pick up your hands. There is no record of this happening. Exactly. And the lawyer would say, I cannot believe you said that. I said, said what? You want to read that back? Nobody heard it except you. Anyway, I go back to my roots. So now I have a stenographer. I have a law clerk who happens to be my granddaughter. I wanted to ask you how <laughs> yes. nice is that to That's have your fabulous. granddaughter part of the show. It's terrific. What a gift it is for both of us because she will be third generation lawyer, female lawyer in our family, which is exciting for me. And she's got a bit of a bite to her. Sounds like which, she's like her grandmother's chip which off the is, old block. Yes, yeah, she's got a little bit of a bite, which I know will develop as she gets older. Uh, and this is a good stretch of the legs for her. She's enjoying it and she sort of fell right into it. She had no stage fright. She has confidence. She knows how to stay in her lane. And so this new show actually gave me an opportunity to do, put a period on 25 beautiful years, which were fun, and left on top, which is some people don't know, you know, when to, when to see the taillights. <laughs> well, it's hard. It's, hard. It's, a, it's a fun job. Why would you want to give that up? Well, and you don't. Right. Especially, well, I didn't want to stop working because I don't play golf, I don't play tennis. Uh, Do you have any hobbies whatsoever? I play gin. <laughs> oh, I've seen you play gin with our friend Cindy, Cindy Adams. She claims you don't know how to count. Well, she's not wrong. <laughs> you know, we have a big family, as you do. Yes. We have a big family, lots of kids, lots of grandkids. The, most of the grandkids are older, so they're fun and, you know, they can have a political discussion with you, they can have uh, an economy discussion with you, they can discuss stocks and bonds, and some of them are even more sophisticated, not me, but they're trying. So it's interesting to be around them. So tell me how this show is different, or is it different, than the one that we've seen and loved for so many years? Well, other than the stenographer, the law clerk, I have a new bailiff, Kevin, who was my security, my personal security for the last several years, who's absolutely a delightful guy, and he loves that he's in front of the camera now, and I feel totally comfortable with around him. I mean, he was my security, so I feel totally protected. 
We're able to get into other courts because we have a larger judgment gap in this show. Other than that, we have a fabulous new set. So I understand you're going to be able to watch it on your phone and watch it on your iPad or your television. And you'll be watch, able to watch new episodes every week. I understand that that's how they're going to play the episodes of six or seven or eight at the beginning of the week. And then you can watch them at your leisure. Watch them at your leisure. I'm trying to use the modern terminology, which is not easy. You, they're going to dump, dump them. them. They dump them. They I'm dump. sorry. I said, yes. No dumping here. <laughs> we work very hard to make this a beautiful episode. No, don't dump. Find another word. The subject matter. Is it the same? Is it different? You know, every case is different because the personalities in every case are different. I don't care what you know, There will always be dogs that speak. Get away from you that bite a neighbor or nip a dog, sometimes a child. There will always be two neighbors feuding over how much of the hedge is now on their property. So you don't want to embarrass yourself. There will always be a dispute between people who have taken their road rage to the extreme. There will always be those cases. It's the personalities that make them different. I mean, you know, it's sort of interesting, Rosanna. There was a time in television, things are cyclical, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Where if you weren't a game show, they didn't want to know from you, <laughs> right? It's true. Right. That was about a four or five year period. I mean, if you think about it, who wants to be a millionaire? The lady from Britain who came over with something, you know, your fire, you lost. Yes, and pyramid. Oh. A pyramid. Yeah. And if you didn't have an exciting game show, nobody wanted to take a pitch. And then there was a time when sitcoms were it. That was it. And they had sitcom writers were like mind gold. You know, they were f falling all over themselves to get the best sitcom writers and to put together sitcoms. Then they got very expensive. Now they realize that they can have people laying in a bucket of worms and seeing how long you can lay in a bucket of worms. And that is a program. And that's very cheap to produce. You get a big bucket, you get people. They go in worms, they go in water, they have snakes around them and how many... Right. You, you know, you can get skills. naked, you can get afraid, you can <laughs> go in the forest. All of this is instead of paying all these people to write smart, stuff it's so everything will have a cycle you know when I started people's court had been off the air court was dead nobody cared about it uh, they cared about it initially it, they got a first look at court with Joe Wapner mm. and it was fine I mean Joe Wapner wasn't exactly a jazzy guy. <laughs> he was okay, but not a jazzy guy. So it was over. And I mean, if you think about it now, I do. I think that there were probably at least 10 or 15 court programs that have come and gone or more since I started. But it's still there. And, and I'm actually going to be playing against myself come November which is also sort of fun.